Feel like a star, but only strictly where I'm famous. I'm in this for the longest haul, like we'll see where it takes us. I'm throwing back these double shots like whiskey here is weightless. Cause, cause this career I chose was even riskier than Vegas, yo. So you may have remembered him a few months ago. He was on the show, but now we are together live from Brisbane. So it's been really so much fun for this Jersey girl <laughs> to head down. And I've gotten to pet a, pet a uh, koala bear. I got to uh, feed a kangaroo. Um, I, get to, I was a little nervous because, you know, I, I know they're really kind of peaceful, but I was so afraid that, I mean, they've got, you guys, <laughs> these things have claws on them that are so big. I was like, oh my goodness, if this rips my eyeball out. <laughs> but um, it's been really, really, really fun. It, it's such a beautiful country and the landscape and, and all of that. Yeah, it, sh it certainly makes me very proud to uh, show off our amazing fauna in this country and uh, an extreme heat as well. It was very hot here at the moment. <laughs> I've even got a little bit of a suntan because I've been away <laughs> for so long, but it's good to be home and to show Colby our, our, our lovely country. So. Yeah, he, on the first day, you guys, we walked uh, how many miles would it be? Do you know the miles? Yeah, about 11 miles. We <laughs> uh, so it was a lot of walking, which was good. Uh, I felt like I was earning my glasses of Chardonnay <laughs> at the evening. <laughs> yes, we took, which, a, we took you along the Kangaroo Cliffs, so the eye over the river, and yes. the Botanical Gardens, and South Bank and Brisbane, yeah. with the intent that if she sleeps, uh, we'll tie her out and she'll sleep through her jet lag. And, it kind of didn't quite work out that way, did it? No, no. I've been waking up, uh, waking up at like five in the morning here, but it's okay. You know what? You know how it is, though, you guys. When you're traveling somewhere new, you're so excited anyway. So it's amazing, and uh, and the fact that we get to serve spirit here is so incredible. And uh, we have a dem tonight, a demonstration it tonight. It, uh, it is in uh, Brisbane. It's kind of a little bit more of that, what do you call that, Gold Coast? Yeah, so it's in between Brisbane and the Gold Coast. It's in an uh, area called Upper Coomer. Yeah, so we've got that tonight and uh, very excited for that event. And I think Tony's got a flyer. Tony, will you show the flyer if you have it? Do you have it? <laughs> So, um, what well, I because uh, it's the time, so tonight is the first there or the second? Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's our Brisbane, <laughs> it's our event, so it's um, it's there, and we have our upper, we have the upper, where is it called? The upper center, you can show that photo at the upper center, yeah, Upper Coomera Center, it's 90 Reserve Road, uh, Upper Coomera. Yeah, start, there we go. Starts at 7 p.m. Uh, sharp and uh, goes to about 9.30. So then there's a meet and greet afterwards as well. Um, so anyone between Brisbane and uh, the Gold Coast, if you've got no plans tonight, we'd love to see you there. Tickets are $45. There's still a few limited seats left, isn't there? So if you if you can come down, we'd love to see you there. Yeah, this, it's going to be a lot of fun absolutely i know a lot of the listeners here in the united states but we've got some uh, aussie friends i think watching and listening so hopefully they'll hop in their car and uh, head on down to hang out with us but you know before we get started tonight to really talk about some of the things that have come up in our discussions with mediumship i do want to give just a wonderful thank you to sue williams from abitsa she has done such an amazing job putting yes. all of this together for us. And yeah. I told her the other day, I was like, girl, mm -mm, there's no way I could do it. Right. <laughs> She's 
worked relentlessly. Yeah, but yeah. it's going to be so much fun, and uh, she's just so wonderful. And gosh, we're, I'm going to go to Sydney next week, and then uh, I head to Melbourne, and then I'm off to New Zealand. You guys, I'll tell you what. <laughs> yeah. You'll have to hold a kiwi, a little kiwi bird. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, ready. my goodness. So much fun. Yeah. So much fun. So, you know, this is going to be really great. Um, tonight, here's what we're going we're gonna to do, you guys. We are going to do our best to take a few callers. It depends on the connection. So hopefully that connection is really strong. And I know I talk about this every show, but tonight is just so important. Uh, if you want to call in, call in, but you have to really, really listen tonight and have all of those external noises off. It's so important because we already have a delay because we're halfway around the world. And hello, it's, hello, it's hello. Friday for us. <laughs> Is anyone out there? Okay. <laughs> so it's a, uh, it's a lot. So if you'll just help us out so that we can help you also try to answer us as quickly as possible. Again, just to help that with that delay and know what your question is. You know, if you have a question about your own gifts or a question you want us to tune into, uh, just have it very specific for us. It's just going to help out, make it just so much smoother, but you know, I do know, uh, I had Reese on, like I said, a few months ago, but you know, I do want to just make sure for any of you who didn't catch that episode or want to learn more, Reese is a medium and he uh, is based in Australia, but he actually just recently moved to Holland, right? That's <laughs> Why? It's cold there. <laughs> you all know how I feel about cold weather, but it's amazing. So how does it feel to come back home here to, to work this this month. Yeah, well, I think the, the greatest thing is, is that being in different cultures and other, other lifestyles and how other people live. Yeah. And that's been really good for my mediumship as well. Right. And the odd thing is, is I've noticed that since I, when I do come back, I'm able to connect with Dutch people in the audience more than I ever could. Oh, cool. Which is really random. Yeah. And, so, and I'm even getting like references to names and things like that. When before, I, when I didn't go to Holland, <laughs> I, It'd be very rare for me to, to connect to someone who had the Dutch background. So uh, whether that's you know the experience and the learning and referencing from other other culture, but it's just incredible how it seems to all work out in the end. Yeah, it really so, really does. Yeah. And uh, you know when you are working with spirit, how how does so when we say spirit, that means your loved ones in spirit, right? How do you connect with them? Do you feel them really, like? For me, I kind of feel them come in and then I kind of, all of a sudden they just start talking so I can hear them. How, how does it work for you? Yeah, that's a great question, Colby. Yeah, well, it depends. Uh, sometimes I've had people with me before I've met the person, which is um, interesting because I don't want to engage my mind and I overthink it too much. Um, so I kind of ask, uh, are you for someone on, for this person or are you for this event? Yeah. Um, and then I ask again if, it, if they are for that event and then I'll trust that communication. Otherwise, I just get up on, the, on the event and I just say, I've got someone now and I'm prepared to work with that person in spirit. So it's an influence of my mind. Otherwise, I might be drawn to someone. So I might even see someone connected to that person on either side of their family. Um, and then the communication will start. But I've, over the years, I've learned not to try and embellish too much because I used to be on all the time. So yeah. I, I don't know if you were, but when I first started, I couldn't sleep very well. And um, everyone at night time, um, I'd I'd start getting messages for people even with the um, in the daytime. So the main thing was is just when, I'm, when I do, when I am ready, I'll speak. I'll speak for spirit. So are you the same, Colby? I am. Yeah. The, I am the same. It is very... Um, it's incredible though when you you know when you feel that person come in, you can feel you guys. It's amazing. You can feel yeah. and you know if it's a woman or a man, yeah. and you can tell that relationship. Yeah. And do you get the tingles too? When I do. I know, when I'm right, yeah. I know that because they tell you. I yes. get the tingles. I don't know if you feel the same out there, but yes, but yeah, we call it goosebumps. So goosebumps, yeah. uh, I say, you know what I tell? No, <laughs> goosebumps. It's way more romantic. <laughs> I tell my students or the clients, if I get goosebumps, I feel like that is spirit, like applauding, like saying, yes, you said it. That's, that's what I was trying to say. So 
So I feel like that's really what it is. Mm -hmm. They, they, they really, spirit wants us to communicate, wants to encourage, wants to get that message to you. So it is really, really fun. Um, but I also think too, the development part of mediumship is also really important because it's not our uh, natural way of communicating. So when we learn the other language of spirit, I do think that that helps, don't you? Oh, absolutely. And I didn't realize that you have to pursue spirit and ask questions and have some kind of structure to how you communicate. I, in the beginning, I would just say, well, someone talked to me. Yes. And I didn't realize that I, I could communicate back. And by asking certain questions, I could get certain information back as well. So it definitely works both ways. Yeah. It, yeah. That's the thing. We can't forget that it's a, a, a two-way street communication, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I always tell people, you know, it's about being interested. Be curious about who, who's talking to you. Want to get to know them. And I think that that really helps with that conversation yeah and what i love too i used to think i'd be worried or nervous about different cultures yeah like reading for an indian person for the first time i thought i know nothing about indian people but it's incredible that spirit somehow through intelligence through thought through te telepathy they are able to still communicate so that we understand and we can still transfer that information right? yeah yeah it is so incredible yeah, yeah, so one there's time, no language um, barrier, is it? Th there really is no language barrier. Mm -hmm. And I know one time I had a sitter, a, a client. She was, I believe she was Japanese. I do know it was Asian. I, I believe Japanese. And, uh, but her mom didn't speak any English. In fact, her mom never made it to the United States. Uh, but her mom was talking so I could hear her. And then her mom had me draw something. And I didn't know what it was. Uh, and I said, you know, your mom just had me draw this. I don't know what it, I, I don't know what it means. I mean, does this make sense to you? And I showed the, the girl yeah. what I had drawn. And she, she just, she, I couldn't believe, she goes, that's my, that's the symbol for my family's name. Like that, I was like, oh, it's like, <laughs> what? That's amazing. I thought it was like, Incredible too. I thought it was really, uh, really fun. I, but again, going to your point of uh, we don't need to necessarily speak the same language or have the same background or have the same experiences because at the end of the day, we're, we're all one anyway. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah. And, I, and I think too, like get you get more proof. If you, now you know you can ask in thought and, and get a message back from your loved ones. Then ask for more proof, but I'll get some confirmation. So I want to wipe that little black tear from grandma. <laughs> I still got it, right? And just, wow. And so I didn't even know she was still influencing my mind. Because I was wow. Like, so, See? Like, yeah. It's magic. So to, I am so looking forward to delivering messages tonight to... It's fun. Um, we'll be working together for the first we time. We will be working so together for exciting. the yeah. first time, yeah. and I think it's going to be amazing. And yeah. uh, and you're far prettier than me. You've <laughs> got way more hair than I have, so I think she's going to be a standard. We'll, we'll, hopefully, I just tell them to say yes to everything. <laughs> That'll be great. <laughs> so how about we try a caller or two? You want to do that? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. so what we're going to do, remember, everybody... Uh, we're actually going to have a little help from my producer, Tony, in the house. Hi, Tony. Hello. Thank you. So of course. You, what you can do is maybe, uh, so everybody listen to Tony. He's going to give an area code. Yep. And I we're going to go from there. So just make sure, again, that all your outside noises are off. Um, and that you have your question really clear, and uh, I think we're just gonna we're gonna go. We're just gonna try this. You ready, Tony? I'm ready. All right. All right. Let's do it. All right. So five three zero. Okay. I can't wait. Here we go. Five three zero. You are on the air. Who is this? Maria. I'm sorry, Maria. Uh, Maria. Hi, Maria. How are you? I'm 
doing fine. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, what can we do for you tonight? Um, I just wanted to see if you felt anyone around me. Oh, is there anyone in particular you're hoping to connect with just for our timing tonight? Maria. Maria. Uh, yes. Uh, Maria. Oh. Hi, Maria. Maria. Let me turn down. I was going to say, if you have a background, please, t please turn the background uh, off. Tommy, can you, can yep. you okay, Maria? I've got it off. Okay, I have it turned down now. Well, yeah, it has to be off. Remember that part where I said no background noises? Remember that part? <laughs> uh, yep. <laughs> I got it now. I'm sorry. Right, I was cooking Maria, dinner. Like I didn't think I was going to get picked. <laughs> See? Who would you like to connect to, babe? Uh, my daughter. Okay, got it. Um, also, though, Maria, can I ask, you have an older female in spirit as well. Is that right? Like a mother or a grandmother? Is that right? Yes. Because she's with your daughter. Because yes. I got, did you get that feeling too? Okay. So yeah, you, my mom. Probably my mom. Your mom, your mom comes to as a, a mama bear for her granddaughter. <laughs> Do you feel that? Oh, she, yeah, that sounds like her. Yeah, she... She was like, uh, she almost like has her arms around your daughter saying, who wants to talk to her? Who, who? Like. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Um, yep, that so sounds like my mother. Let me, let me tune into to your daughter a bit. I feel like your daughter, now she is younger when she passes, but she's old enough to kind of start to know who she is. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, that's okay. true. Like, I feel like you really knew her personality because she feels spunky to me like i get a, a spunky feeling around her does that make sense oh yes that's her feisty she's also feisty um she's uh -huh. strong willed like i feel like i, I see a strong willed girl but she, again um there's that sense of like fighting does that make sense not fighting in an aggressive way but fighting for life or fighting for what she wants yes oh yes definitely she was very um strong willed very hard-headed yeah but very yeah. sweet also you know and what's interesting too she gives me the color pink um it's funny because i wouldn't think of pink with her you know but uh, because uh -huh. of how she comes in but pink she, she feels like she loves the color pink or a strong pink so did you do you have something uh -huh. pink that occurs i can't think of anything offhand other than growing up you know they had pink bedding and purple bedding. Yeah, there you go. Okay, okay, I got it. Uh, Rich, do you, do you want to jump in? Yeah, I just felt like um, I'm, I'm a bit remorseful about not being able to say goodbye properly. Um, so she just said, I wish I could have told you I loved you more at the end. Does that make sense at all? My, my body yeah, we, we were actually very, well, we were very open. I have no regrets. Um, we did tell each other all the time how much we loved each other. We were very close. Okay, but at the end, though, I feel like her body's let her down. Does that make sense? So she can't. Sleep. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. That, that's really, true. Yeah. Yeah, and what about? I know. I feel like I know you've got some of her hair, or cut a piece of her hair, or kept it. Does that make sense at all? I. Oh. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Aww. So she's, and I know. I also feel like I'm, my name's being written on my body. So it's like a tattoo, you know, like a. But I feel like her name's at least being written. Do you? Do you feel so? Well, it's funny when he said written, I saw the name, I saw Lily. So I don't know if Lily is a connection to a flower or do you have a connection to Lily, either a name or a flower connected for living or in spirit? Not that I'm aware of. Huh? Not with it's Lily. L-I. Do you know? It's L-I. Elisa or a Lily. Are you sure? Not that, not that I could think of right now. All right, Maria. You know the rules, though. If it makes sense later or it's connecting, you understand what I'm saying, you put it in the Facebook comments for us, okay? okay. Um, but do you okay. understand that you, Reese, was talking about? I'm sorry, what was that? You understand the tattoo that Reese was talking about? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I got a tattoo and my daughter got a tattoo, son did, and my husband did right after uh -huh. she passed. She's really honored and she's got a great sense of humor, you know. It's good you put it where it, in a nice okay. place. <laughs> what what is the what is the tattoo of, Maria? Um, 
Mine is um, after she after she passed away. I found a tattoo on her phone that she wanted to do a mother and daughter tattoo, and it said "In Fragile," which is unbreakable. And so I ended up getting it. Um, I get and it's on my wrist, so I can see it. Okay, there's there's gotta be a. Uh, that, that lily keeps coming back in, so I just got to make sure I mention it again to you. So it's either a flower or a name, okay? So either there's lily, uh -huh. either there's got to be a connection. Um, I even feel like I want to say rose as well, like whether there's a rose connection, but like a rose, so the flower, lily, yeah. rose. My, yeah, my other, my daughter, um, her sister got a rose tat tattooed on her arm. There you go. Okay, there's something. There, there we go. See how minds are getting influenced with different Yeah, things. there we go. So I just feel like with, uh, I feel like with your daughter, there's a, a sense where, you know, I just feel like Maria, she's letting you know she's, to never give up the fight. Like, to, to, to she just feels like she doesn't want people to get kind of swallowed up in sorrow or swallowed up in grief. She, she wants you to kind of keep fighting for it kind of keep fighting for the things that she believed in, the things that she was going for. Yeah, yeah. I do. Okay. I do. I, I try to honor her all the time in just everything. You know, starting a child loss group in our town um, for other mothers and fathers that have lost their children because we didn't have one. Um, yeah. And just, you know, having a sign put up in her name where she was yeah. um, killed. Who's, uh, who's birthday? We have a birthday. Um, cause I just saw balloons. <laughs> <laughs> who's, um, whose birthday do we have coming sure. up now? Well, coming up, I, we're just, my, I'm planning on going somewhere with my daughter for her birthday. We were just yeah. going to get some tickets and stuff tonight. See, your, your, uh, your other daughter is going with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, she wants somewhere warm, just so you know. Oh, okay. <laughs> so. I also hear her saying, I love you, Mum, and there's nothing you could have done to, to for you know what was to take place. It's not your fault, love, okay? And I, I feel like I can hear it's like her voice being played back or listened to on like through a message or on a phone. And I've got tears on the pillow, and I even want to hold a shirt or sleep in bed with a shirt, but it looks like it's black. And then I also got like a cap uh, that it might spot have a team influence on there as well, uh, but it looks like baseball cap that might also be significant. Does that also ring true to you? The shirt, the black shirt she used to wear. And it, 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 do, do you cuddle it and take it to bed or someone else is sleeping with it at this moment in time because she makes me feel like it's this time? No, but um, she has a black she has a black robe and it still smells like her. I was just in her room yesterday Aww. and I was just I was re leaning over to grab something and I noticed that her robe still smelled like her and her robe's black. Because I want to wear it or I want to put it on and you've done that, right? Oh, a while ago. Quite a while ago. Well, she just knows that you've done that since she's died and, and she loves you, okay? Okay, so I hope that helps, Maria. You know, lots of lots of love. you got to just know that she's around, okay, honey? All right, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Lots of love to you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Bye. Best wishes, love. It's, uh, you know, it's always hard because we could do, I always tell them we could do a whole hour with just them, but all the other callers are like, my turn too. <laughs> so we try to get a few in, but, you know, losing a child is so difficult. Oh, I can um, imagine. I've got a little girl. I can I don't understand. Yeah. So, um, but how about another caller? Tony, can you give us another caller, please? Yes, ma'am. We have 815. Okay, here we go. Eight one five. You are on the air. Who is this? This is Tia. Tia. Yes. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm. I'm good. How you doing, Reese? I'm doing great. <laughs> good day. Good day. 
What can we do for you tonight, Tia? I feel like I'm kind of stuck in my life right now as far as career and everything. And I just want to see if anything good's going to be coming up in the near future for me. Yeah. Um, you know, Tia, I, I keep feeling like the work is tough, but because you don't have a lot of options. Like, I feel like wherever you are, there's not a lot of options for you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, because I feel like that's part of the stuff. Like, it's just not easy. I'm going to be really honest, too. I also feel like, you know, this is really hard because we all have to pay bills, so I, I totally know this. But I also feel like you want to be doing something different that you can't be doing. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, also, you know, I also feel like you, you've you got this kind of, I don't know if I want to call it a desk job, but you're definitely dealing Whenever I get that feeling, it's like someone who's dealing with a lot of paperwork. So paperwork, are you doing things like that at the current job? No. What are you doing currently? I am a caregiver currently. Oh, interesting. Um, well, you still have a lot of paperwork, though, don't you? Like dealing with people? Yeah, but for on my end, it's more hands-on than it is paperwork. Okay, um, because it feels like you need a little more freedom with what you're doing. Okay. Um, we yeah, I think this is the, probably the best time in your life. It might not sound like it or feel like it, yeah. but it truly is because you get to a point where you're forced to go internal and think about what is my purpose? What, what am I doing here? Uh, so this is a great time because you have to go find what that is. So even if it's one day a week or one day a month where you're trying to put yourself in a space or place uh, to, to improve yourself or to get new skills that yeah. might put you in a better position, this is, this is the time. I often say, you know, if you have the choice between animals, people in the environment, pick one. Pick which one stands out to you right now or go away and think about it and then pick one because you've got to know your audience. Then you need to know your target group. So what's your target group? If I pick... People, is it children, aged care, people with disability, yeah. people with problems, and, and focus because yeah. you need to target group, okay? Yeah. And then once you've done mm -hmm. that, you need three to five skills or a collaboration of one or all of those things, which helps make a difference to those people's lives. So if you actually focus on what you want to give to others, instead of labeling yourself like, what am I? you'll find more happiness. They did a big study at Yale over different, oh, you know, different um, very cool. professions. And those who really found life purpose after a 30 year period were all those people who worked with either animals or people or the environment because it wasn't about them, it was what they wanted to give back to others. And I think if you put yourself in that space, you might find some happiness there. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's about, you know, you do caregiving, but I think maybe it's what you're doing um, that needs to be changed a little bit, okay? Because I also just feel yeah, like that makes sense. I feel like your body is just so tired. So I'm not real sure that you could even physically be doing this long term. Does that also resonate? You are you are dead on. It registers okay. here. I I had stage four breast cancer at 31 years old, and I've been doing this job for about 20 years, and I physically just cannot do it anymore. So you guys nailed it on the head with that. Yeah. <laughs> So it's about looking at, like Reese is saying, looking at those areas. I mean, obviously, you're probably more of a people person, but look at how that, look at how, how else you can help people. How else can you, without hurting your body anymore, you know, without putting yeah. that shit in yourself. And also, you know, there's many reasons why we get cancer, but I also feel like this caretaking is way too stressful for you. Honestly, I, I feel like your system doesn't like it anymore. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you are right. So I, I know, you, and the last thing we'll say is, I know you've been doing this a long time. And so you're used to it. You're comfortable in it. You can do it with your eyes closed. So the idea of embarking on something so brand new, I'm sure is very scary. And then how you're going to make that kind of money. But I really feel like you can, you know, maybe it is working more in administrative in administration organizing 
caretaking or organizing how you're going to help people or organizing a way of understanding. One last thing I'll say, just because it kind of came in from Reese. Um, I feel like for you, Tia, you had a revelation that, that there's more to life than the everyday grind. And I feel like you got to start doing something that is allowing you to kind of help do that a bit more. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. So that is your homework. Tia, you have a lot of homework we gave you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I, I'm down. I I'm I'm let you guys know. In. I'm excited. We're going to want to follow up in a few months. All right. To yeah. see how well you've done on your homework and what you've learned. Okay. Oh, for sure. Have an awesome time. Have an awesome trip, Coley. Thank you for everything, you guys. And, and thank God you're not in the frozen tundra like we are. <laughs> oh, lots of love to you. Bye, Bye Tia. Lots of love. Bye. All right. How about another caller? Are you having fun? I'm having fun. Are you guys having fun out there? I hope you are, right? Uh, Tony, how about another caller? You got it. 707. Oh, 707. You are on the air. Who is this? Blessings. This is Jonathan Wolf. Reese, how are you, brother? Good, mate. How are you? <laughs> Who's like, yeah, I thought someone was speaking another language. I'm <laughs> <laughs> calling, calling on my US cell phone. Um, so from Australia and Brisbane, all the way back to the States, all the way back over here. So blessings, really glad and happy to be connected to you both. Oh, well, the, how fun is that? Well, what question can we answer for you tonight? It's um, obviously recently I connected through Facebook, so recent knows who I am. Um, I'm a shamanic practitioner plus psychic medium myself. Um, got a couple of callings of doing a couple of workshops that I'm doing all over the world um, mm -hmm. over the next couple of months. And um, I've just been shifted to go back to Canberra and wanted to see um, if you pick up anything on that. Yeah. Um, uh, to me, anyway, Canberra feels like a, it's a, a good space. Um, I think you're meant to be there. If, it, if you weren't, it would be different. So there's obviously a reason for you to go there. Um, are you thinking of going, it looks like you're going to go back though. So there's going to be more, do you feel like probably this consecutive visit or at least another visit to come? So I, I think there'll be something that happens there through what you're doing that will end up continuing. And there's a need for you to kind of find balance in fitting all this into your life. That's the feeling I get too. Yeah, I think too. I feel like it's going to be, um, I think it's going to be a sense too where you get invited back. Okay. So I feel like it's about making sure you're building. I, I feel like what you're doing, the relationships are good. Like I feel like people are really connecting to you. Okay. Um, so really own that. But I also feel like you're going to get an invite back. So that's what I feel like is going to happen. So are you working with someone else or did you make a connection while you were there? Um, well, I lived in Canberra for a um, couple of months and then um, my wife's family still lives down there, but I'm actually doing a workshop down there in a couple of months anyway. But um, there is the purpose of obviously moving back from Brisbane down to Canberra and then there's also going back um, I've been called to go to Colorado and back to California as well. So um, just need some direction yeah. <laughs> on that. Jaded jet setter, my friend. So uh, there you go. Enjoy. Sit down, <laughs> buckle up, and hang on. All right. Well, there you go. Enjoy well, your good. travels. Enjoy spirit, and and just look for those invites to come. Okay, honey. Blessing. Right. Thank you to you both. Bye. Take care, mate. <laughs> Best wishes. Good to hear from you. Bye bye. Oh, how wonderful, yeah. right? That's nice. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Good Look life. at that. He's, yeah. on the, uh, the, he's on his way traveling the opposite way, right? Yeah, and he's a humble person, so he'll do good for other people, you know. That's what it's all about. So. Very cool. Yeah. Very, very cool. All right, let's do another. T Tony, do we have more callers? We probably have a bunch, don't we? Oh, <laughs> we do. We have tons of them. Okay, you yeah. pick another one. Us. All right, number 12, we have seven or 570. Okay, here we go. 570, you are on the air. Hello. 
Hi, who is Hi. this? Hi, this, this, is, this is Lindsay. Lindsay, first of all, you get a gold star for excellent, clear communication coming through. <laughs> awesome. I did take you off speakerphone, so I heard the rules. What can we uh, do for you tonight, honey? Um, I'm just curious to know if, um, or I guess really what you see coming down the road for me. Um, this has been a year of a lot of uh, challenges, and um, yeah, I just, I just want to see what or hear what you guys are seeing. <laughs> I, I keep hearing about love. <laughs> so I keep feeling like um, it's about really embracing that relationship, really embracing love, okay? Did you get out of a relationship last year? No, uh-uh. Hmm. There's something in relationship that makes me feel like it's really building this year, really growing. Um, and I feel like okay. there's a Yeah. Oh, what was that? I feel like I, I, I think you're going to have this family in the next year or two, Lindsay. Well, I, I have one now. Um, yeah. Are you trying to have another child? Does that mean it's 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 in the it's in the air? It's, oh no! It's a, a it's a question. Yes, honey. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it ain't in the air. It's a yes. Yeah, I also got um, okay. some changes to do with um, managing each other's like work and commitment and finances. And then I also felt like that, like oh, oh, either I would need to move or be closer to where the action is. So there might even be a change about living environment. Does that make sense to you, Lindsay, or not? Hmm. No, not not just not now. Okay. Would it be towards your partner then or something about being closer to work or work? Because I've got something to do with that in my feeling intuitively. Does that make sense at all? I mean, I, I just started um, a new job. Okay. I don't know if... Yeah, okay. And, um, you know, I, th I think it's going to set you up for what you want. So I think, you know, things might have not been so good in the past. Um, and I, I, to me, it feels really good. But yeah. I also think you'll be making time to consider other family options. Yeah, no, I, I'm telling you, Lindsay, listen, honey, I'm, 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 a, I'm a good baby predictor. <laughs> I, I've heard this about you. You've, you've, <laughs> you've said this in past, um, I guess, sessions for people. So I, I remember hearing that. No, I, I'm, I'm telling you, we got a baby coming. I can't wait. And... Remember, your job is to make me look like a rock star and have one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, I, that's part of the, um, I guess, the reason that I have had some hesitancy about that because um, I had a, a baby yeah. and it was just a really difficult postpartum um, time for me. And so I just, you know, I wasn't, I guess I had a lot of hesitancy about whether or not to, to have a second. Right, but here's the one thing is you, you gotta realize a um, couple things. First of all, the chemistry from the first baby will be different than the chemistry of the second baby, okay? And mm -hmm. the thing is, is you, you'll, know, you'll be able to take better steps to be proactive in order to kind of have a healthier, uh, more positive response after you, you were caught off guard the first time, but the second time you can go in so much more prepared and, and really make it a much more beautiful experience for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I know it's difficult, but, uh, I, you know, I'm going to be honest though. I, I don't feel like the second one's going to be as bad. I really don't. I know that first one was, but I, I don't feel like the second one's going to be as bad. Yes. I guess if you go into something with thoughts of fears, then you're going to be bringing that energetically as well. I mean, obviously talk to your GP and, and get uh, medical advice as well. But mm -hmm. I think it's, you know, thoughts become living things. So if you think fear or correct fear about it, then you can attract it. So Try and see a healthy baby to come. Try and be healthy and loving your body. And, and it's going to be a beautiful birth. It's going to be not so traumatic in the past. You've learned from all that. 
and and you know it's possible that you can have um, another beautiful uh, life to come you know? yeah i i think you're just such an amazing mom i can feel that energy and i feel i'm i'm getting like a grandfather influence though or father <laughs> influence that's kind of talking about a name that's being passed on to a child, at least in their middle name. So I don't know if that resonates with you, but I've got the influence of spirit saying they're honoured, uh, but that a child carries their name, at least in their middle name. Does oh. that, does that make sense to you? My Well, my my daughter now actually, her middle name is, she's named after my grandmother. Okay, so I've got a man who's very proud about the fact that you've thought of her and carried on the name. So very, very mm. proud. Now, I don't want to call the spade a spade, but if, it also got the male influence. So maybe your next child could also be a boy. I know. I was thinking I was I, – I kept feeling like it was going to be so, a boy. But, you know. I know. Have fun. At least try. Yeah, your husband <laughs> really wants a boy, doesn't he? Yes. <laughs> well, he does. I, listen, we got a 50-50 shot, as I always like to say, but uh, it feels pretty good. <laughs> And I'd be very surprised if you didn't honour that name with either your partner's side of the family or your side of the family. Yeah. In the middle name as well. Yeah. They're very proud of you. Yeah. And, um, Aww, one that's last, great. One last thing we'll leave you with. I know you just said you started this job. And I know that kind of can influence a lot of timing. But, you know, to be honest, I'm not really... I'm not feeling like this job is, is your dream job. Uh, I mean, it could be, but it doesn't feel that way. So I think you're going to be fine kind of taking some time to have a baby. <laughs> yeah, definitely 12 to 18. Thank you. Yeah. It's going to be wonderful. <laughs> Thank let you. Know. Let us know if yeah. it's true and let us know, won't you? Yeah. Lindsay, do you have a McKenzie? Okay. Do you happen to know a McKenzie? A name M A McKenzie. I don't know for some reason. A, 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 that's not a common name. Mackenzie, it's yeah. like a Scottish. Uh, oh, is it? Surname. Oh, what's oh. name? My my last name starts with M A. Oh, does it? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Scottish. Yeah. Well, there we go. Mac Mac McDonald or McDonald. There we go. So, all right, listen, honey, you <laughs> have a great night, and you know. Go and uh, go and enjoy. You, you're going to be, I, I really, like I said, you know, Reese is right. You got to talk to your doctor. Um, but I, I really believe that you can do this. I really, really do. And, and you have an amazing husband that is so supportive. He's going to be there for you, honey. You know, and get yeah. your body ready. Yeah. You know, yeah. Good thoughts, eat well, put what you feed you, love your body. Yeah. Start putting out the thought, I love this baby, I'm ready for this baby, and it's gonna bring our family together and there you go. It's gonna be healthy and we're gonna have a great life and just start putting all those thoughts out there. So they I hope that helps, yeah. honey. Does that help? Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You have a great night. All the best. You too. Bye bye. Bye. All right, so we are down literally. Okay, Tony, we're going to try to do one more, but before you put them through, hang on. Uh, we got, like, one minute. It has to be, like, a one-minute powwow. So, you guys, if you're the next one, one minute's what we got. <laughs> the show always flies by so quickly. Is it right? No, that's, I just can't believe it's over already. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's so quick. All right, Tony, can you, can you give us one more? Okay, one more. So 818. Ah, oh, we got yeah. someone from the home, home area code. 818, you are on the air. Who is this? It's Mary. Thank you for talking. Hi, Mary. Mary, we got like Hi. a minute, baby doll. How are you? Okay, well, not good. Question about work or business. I need a new job and I requested from my current job um, more severance pay because of weird circumstances. Do you see me getting more severance? And then do you see me getting a new job soon enough? I feel like there's a lot of friction with the company over the severance. I feel like, um, I almost feel like they would test you more, more testing you to, I don't know if they kind of take you seriously. So does that make sense? Do you understand that part? 
Yeah. Okay. So I feel like the fight, to be honest, is going to be a little harder than you think. Like, I think you can offer that extra severance. I don't think they're going to agree. I think they're going to counter it. So then you have to decide if that's enough and if you want to fight more. Is it worth fighting over? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is it worth dragging it out? Oh, it's so worth it. <laughs> Even a day is yeah. worth it for these people. And then, yes. but do you see me finding a job in the next, like soon enough in the next month or two? Um, it, it feels like you're more in that two month range. It doesn't feel like it's a month. I'm just going to be really honest. I feel yeah. like you're a little further out. Three months. Okay. Yeah, two to three months. But here's the thing. Oh, I think you've got to be really careful with this because um, I don't want you to hold. Like I think there's a lot of there's kind of negativity around the current situation. So just make sure you don't bring that into looking at the new job. Like that's really important. Okay, that's true. I also, I also feel like you that's need to very have your, true. Okay. I, I feel like you also need your some of your things in order, like your paperwork, because there seems to be maybe yeah. not enough information to back up or support you. So just make sure you've got everything you need. Yeah. Uh, against them, yeah? Yeah, be careful. I think that they, uh, you know, not to create too much drama, Mary, but you know what? I think that they, um, some sort of a history or record keeping, I think that they, it's disappeared or there's something that's kind of gone missing. Yeah, emails. Oh, yeah. how convenient. Yeah, right, that's what I'm saying. I, I, so I feel like I want you to do your part, do what you need to do. Uh, but ready, you know, get ready for a little more battle. But again, I think you being a little bit of the squeaky wheel will kind of help you get what you want. But just remember to separate that completely from that that new job experience, okay? Yeah. All right? Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Oh, yay. I feel so much better now. Thank you. You got this. All right, so we got to go, Mary, but thank you so much. Thank you. Safe travels. Be safe Bye. out there. Well, everybody, I can't believe it, but that is the end of the episode. But please, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's so wonderful, We're right? We're so grateful to have you here in Australia. We're going to hopefully give you the time of your life. We're, it's going to be amazing. Give you memories that you can share forever with me. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. And uh, tonight. it's going to be awesome. Again, if you were in here, around here, come hang out with us. Uh, but otherwise, I will see you all next week. Listen, uh, Reese Wynn Davies is on Facebook, you guys. So go to his page. We have that link up. Make sure you like him, follow him, and uh, we will see you next week, same time. Bye, everybody. Bye. Sometimes I feel like a star, but only strictly where I'm famous. I'm in this for the longest haul, like we'll see where it takes us. I'm throwing back these double shots like whiskey here is weightless. Cause, cause this career I chose was even riskier than Vegas, yo.